Welcome to Talk Tennis. Today's episode, I have a bunch of playtesters joining me. We have Chris here, Troy's here, and Jay is here all the way from Australia. Welcome, guys. Thanks for joining. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks, Michelle. This is the first of what I could see being several episodes on this topic, but a couple of you guys have emailed us and asked us to talk more about customizing and everything that goes with customizing. And these guys are the best of the best. They know how to do it. They can talk you through it and all of that. So that's why they're here today. We are going to talk all things customization. First things first, I do want to have someone explain the difference between lead tape and tungsten tape, since that's become, especially in California, a big um, kind of issue going on right now. So Chris, I'm going to have you explain that one. Um, so tungsten tape is new to tennis or newer to tennis. Lead tape has been around forever and pros have been having the rackets and um, players as well customized with lead tape in the you know 70s, 80s for sure. I remember seeing some of um, Pete's rackets, Pete Sampras's rackets back in the day were just massive chunks of lead tape, you know, at three and nine. Um, and then tungsten is a lot friendlier to the environment and to you to use. It does uh, apply differently. It's a thicker feeling tape. Um, so weighting it um, and the hoop, I've not uh, had an issue, but um, I've tail weighted rackets before just by wrapping lead or placing lead up the bevels of the handle. So just take the grip off and you can put lead tape on the bare pallet and then re-grip it. And you can't really feel it under there depending on how you apply it. But if you just follow the bevels of the racket, you can get away with putting it on there, not really building the grip size up too much. And um, and that's a good way to tell weight the racket. Tungsten tape's a bit too thick to do that with. So you really got to go to maybe to the tungsten putty. And if your racket has a trap door, you take the trap door out, you can put the putty inside, uh, you pack a bunch of cotton wool in there to hold it in place. and and you're good to go. So that's a, it's a bit more challenging to work with when it's when you're tail weighting. But in the hoop of the racket, it's pretty much the same. You stick it where you want to have the weight, and and you're good to go. Nice. And as far as I know, none of us have suffered from any lead poisoning. So if you're doing everything correctly and washing your hands, <laughs> you should be good. <laughs> now, the first obvious question here is why should we talk about customizing? What is customizing? Um, I think a lot of high level players don't even realize that customization is an option. And actually, Jay, I'd like to lean on you and ask you, yeah. when did you first find out that you could customize your racket and what led you to that start doing so? Um, probably, probably about five years ago is when I figured out that you could start customizing your racket. Um, and like what led me to it was, I was just trying to find out how to make my racket just play differently or play a little bit better to me. Um, I didn't particularly want to try to, you know, try different strings at the time or like I really liked my string setup and, and my frame, um, but I was struggling with a couple of different things. So at the time, um, my level went up um, and I was playing against a lot of people that were hitting the ball quite hard. So um, I found out that you could pretty much put red tape or, or tungsten tape um around the hoop of the racket just to add more stability. And I was like, oh, okay, here we go. Um, so I ordered some, put it around three and nine. And, and as soon as I, like, I felt the difference, I was like, hang on a minute, like, there's other stuff that I can do here. And then, and then from there, yeah, the world opened up to me. <laughs> it was a whole new world. Yeah. Troy, I'd actually like you to answer the same question. Because again, like for our listeners out there, Troy and Jay have actually never met. I think this is the first time they're <laughs> even having a conversation virtually in the Zoom situation. But I keep saying that like they have this very similar vibe and what they appreciate about our sport and geek out about. And I can already tell just based on Troy's expression when Jay was talking about that. He's like, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> So same question to you, Troy. Yeah, for sure. Uh, that's cool. Um, yeah, when I first found it out, um, I don't really know if I knew about customizing. I just um, saw a pack of lead tape inside of a sporting goods store. And I was like asking someone around, like, what do you do with this? And like, oh, you can customize your racket. You can, you know, put weight wherever you want. So it was before I even worked at Tennis Warehouse. I don't know, maybe 15 years ago. Um, and I bought like my first racket that I bought was like nine ounces or nine and a half ounces. And like, it was just like getting pushed around. I started playing against better players and it was just like, felt like a toy in my hand. So I found this pack of lead tape for like $4 and didn't know how much weight was in there. So basically I just started putting weight inside the hoop and I covered the whole inner part of the hoop, took off the grip. I wrapped it around cause I saw pictures online, kind of like what Chris was saying, you wrap it around the bevels 
and I used the whole pack of lead tape. Nice. <laughs> I was like, all right, this is going to be a good racket because the pack of lead in your hand doesn't feel like that much weight, you know? So I don't know. I probably put on like two ounces of weight to that racket, took it out to the court, and I gained a lot of stability, but the racket was completely unplayable. Like the sweet spot had shifted. <laughs> like I couldn't even barely get the ball to land past the service line. So from there, I slowly refined it, took weight off, started researching, and then um, kind of got my path down the way of, of racket customization. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> the, the first time I got a pack of lead tape, I was like, oh, let's just use the whole thing. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's a good thing to start with too, is someone that's never customized or tried to add weight to the racket. A lot of times we get a lot of questions or even people disbelieving that such a small amount of weight can affect your racket. So would someone like to take a shot or take turns explaining the different places that you can place weight to do different things as far as upping your swing weight, adding more stability, opening up the sweet spot, all of the things, doing the Troy Lara treatment, adding the leather grip, what does that do? So I know, Chris, you used to dabble in heavier rackets and you've recently gotten a little bit more maneuverable with rackets, but with the injury, you've been going back to the heavy rackets. So what's one way that you enjoy customizing a racket and what, why, what, do, what benefit does it have? Um, so basically the, the heavier the racket, the, the more powerful the racket is going to be to a certain extent. And then I think what Troy ran into was he made it too heavy to swing. You got to be able to move that mass, but uh, as long as the racket's not too heavy for you to be able to swing quickly and not alter your playing style, um, you are going to get more what we call plow through power out of the racket. And that just means when the racket collides with the ball, it is going to win that collision with more authority and just go straight through the ball. And it should in theory, um, provide you with more depth and pace on your shots, as long as it's not impacting your swing speed. Um, and then for me, when I go down with a, a racket on the court, I like to just move the weight around and find out what feels good. I'm going by feel. I'm not really aiming for a spec. I don't have like a, an ideal swing weight in mind mm -hmm. or because it's going to vary from racket to racket, what feels right for that racket. And so I'll go down and I'll move the, the weight around um, and a good way to do it, if you don't want to be like burning through lead tape or losing the um, adhes adhesion on the back of the tape, is you can just hold it on with another tape. So you could use, um, you know, duct tape or whatever, just or even some painter's tape, just to hold the lead in place while you're experimenting and moving around. And when you've got it dialed in and the racket feels right, then you can take all that off and then apply the tape permanently. Um, and then unless you're trying to match specs, I wouldn't worry about specs. I would just go down, move the weight around, find out what plays well for you, um, and then and then come up and measure the specs so that you can uh, replicate it on other rackets. Yeah, totally. Uh, Troy, talk us through, you say you often have coined the term that you would throw a leather grip on it and explain to everyone what that would do and how that would change the racket. Everything's better with the leather on it. No, I'm just kidding. But, uh, That's going to be the yeah. tagline for this episode. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, for most rackets, um, with me, the leather grip really started out as a feel thing. Uh, when I first started working at T-Dub and I was demoing rackets, there was a couple old school player frames, kind of like how your RF-97 comes with a leather grip. And when I first got that feeling of just a um, overgrip on top of that, I was like, man, this just feels amazing. I want this kind of uh bevel fill in my hands for every racket and so that's where i kind of got crazy with like oh, i'll put a leather on everything <laughs> uh, but basically if you do put a leather grip on a on a racket that comes with a, a synthetic grip stock you will add weight to the racket uh on average um a uh, a leather grips about three tenths of an ounce which would be um what is that like about close to Eight 10 days. grams it's right around 10 grams. Yeah. yeah. So uh, about 10 grams additional weight from what it comes with the stock grip. But uh, yeah, it'll add weight to the handle. It usually makes it about two, two points more headlight. So you'll be making the racket a little more headlight, a little more heavy. Um, but one thing that I, I kind of, uh, I get people a lot of times on YouTube or whatever, oh, Troy's going to put a leather grip on that, put a leather <laughs> grip on that. But I've slowly started to figure out that not all rackets, um, it basically for me enhances the feel because uh, when rackets are really stiff, say like a pure drive or those kind of really stiff modern players rackets, when I put a leather grip on those, it almost makes the racket feel stiffer in my hand. So um, I've kind of gone away from putting leather grips on rackets that are already like really stiff 
I tend to prefer it like on rackets that are more that traditional flex, kind of that 65 flex or lower. That's mm -hmm. where I really think the leather grip feels good because the racket's pretty soft. You make it a little stiffer with the leather grip, but rackets that are already like really, really stiff, I kind of tend to have gone back to synthetic grip feel on those. Nice. And Jay, what is what have you found to be your wheelhouse spec? What are you customizing to? How are you customizing? I'm I'm almost 100% echoing Troy here. I will put a leather grip on on almost every racket that I've played. No, with. you guys. Um, <laughs> like literally almost every racket. Um, I don't I don't try to find a particular static weight or a particular swing weight, but I do try to always go for like a particular balance. Um, I do like things to be around that eight to nine point headlight range. Um, so like it will change um, on the racket that I'm using how much weight I will put on. Um, but I will pretty much always put weight um, within the handle um, in the butt cap, just tungsten tape. Or I always wrap it around the, um, either the throat or the handle. I used to always put it in the head. Um, back, you know, four or five years ago, I used to go for that really high swing weight range. Um, but now as I'm, I'm a little bit bigger, um, I don't need to you know, have, have as much weight in the range, uh, in the head. So yeah, pretty much that's what I like to be. Nine, 10 points head height. That's, that's my wheelhouse now. Now I have to ask, are you super calculated when you're measuring? Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> of course you are. Okay. Yeah. You and Troy are the same person, just in different continents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm like Michelle. Michelle's more like, I'm going to throw some lead here, throw some lead there. Yeah. Let's see what happens. You know? yeah. I'm, I'm so particular with my weight. Like, I have to have, I, I measure it to a T. I have to, like, literally, I have to measure it exactly like around the throat here. And it's just, yeah, it's people watching and they're just like, I can't, I can't look at you when you do it. It's just too particular for me to watch. I'm just like, okay, just let me be me. <laughs> so, yeah. I feel like I, I, I feel like I've, I know <laughs> just because I've been around yeah. Troy and I know he's very like, when he does something on a racket, it's perfect. No matter if it's a stencil, if it's a string job, if it's customizing, it's literally perfect. So I can only imagine it might be the hey. same. Do do it good once, you ain't gotta do it again, you know. Oh, that's that's why right. sometimes I'll take Michelle's racket and I'll be like, you know what? Is this where you like the weight? She's like, yeah, this one's good to go. Okay, let me, let me have it. I'll take it off. I'll put it on nice and pretty, <laughs> and then you're good to go. Yeah, you know Michelle's touched the racket when it's not pretty. People constantly ask me like, what's how much weight did you add? I'm like, I don't know. I like Troy said. I literally just keep adding. I always add at twelve o'clock, and I always am like. I'll add, try the RDC, add, try the RDC. Like it's bad. It's a bad habit, yeah. but I don't like numbers. So. <laughs> I was going to say, I mean, it, I think it's important to go by feel too. I think if you, you know, say you're like, oh, I really like a 335 swing weight. Well, that might be great for, you know, rackets with 18, 20 string pounds. And then you go hit a 1619 and suddenly you can't keep the ball in the court because you've got the launch angle from the open pattern plus all the weight. So that's, that's an instance where you might want to dial it down a bit. Um, so for me, I think feels really important, you know, and it's going to vary racket to racket. You can get a super flexible racket versus something, you know, like a, a pure arrow where the balls are really going to come off quickly. And so you get a, a very kind of direct exit angle. There's, there's not that dwell time. And so I think for me too, just going by feel, you know, you don't have to be super dialed in. And then once once you do get the feel you want, then that's when you want to be like, okay, every one of these now has to be the same because I can switch and it doesn't matter. Yeah, definitely. Uh, just off of what Chris just said, I didn't really ever think about that too much because for the most part in the past, I always played really traditional thin beam, 18, 20 rackets, you know, that mid 12 ounce, 335 string weight, whatever. And then uh, when Chris switched to the power stab, and he he told me that he was playing with it almost in stock, you know, right over 11, you know, 320 swing weight or whatever. I was like, no way he's playing that good with that racket, that light, you know. And so I took one of his extra ones and I weighted it up to my spec, like 12-2, 330 swing weight and started hitting the power stab. And I was like, man, this thing's just too much. It's like a, you know, like a hot rod engine with a turbo in it. It was just like I couldn't keep the ball on the court. And so. I tried one of his stock rackets and I was like, man, okay, this racket, this type of racket, this really modern stiff kind of player's racket plays great at that, you know, 11, a little over 11 ounce spec. It was really nice. So yeah, it definitely, definitely depends on the, the frame that you're modding up. Yeah. That's, that's what I, anytime I, I play test something, 
um, I will always hit it um, in stock form before I do anything with it um, to see how it feels, how it plays. And then from there, I will I'll have a leather grip like as my first thing that I do and then see how that feels and then from there start to add on the weight. Um, I, it is, I think it's pretty counterproductive if you just start chucking on weight straight away because you, you don't know what you're what really you're changing. So I, 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 that's why I reckon if you're going to demo a racket, make sure that you try to figure out what it's like just in stock form. That's yeah. a really good point, Jay. I think if you're just changing one variable at a time, um, and that goes for stringing too, you know, don't change a string and tension, change one, then change the other. And, um, you know, hit the racket stock, throw the grip on, see how it feels. And then, okay, a little bit of weight at three and nine or whatever. Um, and then it, you you get to feel the, the quality, you know, whether it's a good quality or a bad quality, you at least get to experience it at each various stage. And I think you'll get to uh, the end perfect result better and and sooner if you do it that way for sure now a question that I feel like we get a lot is for example with the pro staffs a lot of people always ask I have a pro staff 97 how do I weight it up to the RF 97 or you hear people say I have this racket how do I get it to play like that racket what would you suggest in that situation Troy I'm gonna let you answer this one because I know we get it constantly on YouTube (laughs) yeah 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 um, for me, uh, if you were to say like you're taking the 315 gram 97 and trying to make it an RF 97, usually the first thing I would do is start off with weight in the hoop to kind of get that swing weight up, whether mm-hmm. it's three and nine or 10 and two, or if you just want the quick fix, go 12 o'clock, which is pretty easy and, and you don't have to use as much weight. Once you get the swing weight calculated, then from there, I start working my way down the racket and kind of disperse to try to get the balance right and get the static weight up to that, you know, 340 grams. So, you know, you have 315 grams at 340. So you got to cover that distance, um, maybe a little bit in the throat, a little bit uh, underneath the grip or inside the, inside the butt cap. And that's kind of the way you could do it. You know, if you wanted to just kind of do it as an experiment. Um, but we also on the website, we do on the tennis warehouse university, and maybe we could do a deeper dive on that mm-hmm. uh, at a later day. But we actually have a tool on the website where you can literally punch in the specs that you have, punch in the specs that you want, hit the button submit, and it'll tell you exactly where you need the weight tape, um, the weight in the the distance from the bottom up and down to the handle, exact uh, locations to get that exact spec. So that would be like the ultimate way of doing it. Yes, I was supposed to bring that up and hoping to wrangle Crawford and Jonathan for an episode to speak more about that because that's a tool that Crawford created and has made available to Tennis Warehouse. And it's pretty life-changing if you're interested in customizing, I think. Yeah, for sure. Another question we get a lot is, if I have a heavy swing weight on my racket already, is there any way to lower it? Who wants to take that one? Uh, you can trim the bumper guard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the, Graphite usually the last resort. Yeah. <laughs> and you can trim the bumper guard or you can give it to Jason Wong here at Tennis Warehouse and let him play with it for a couple of weeks. And he's pretty aggressive um, with his connection with, with the court with his racket. So, yeah, he'll file some graphite off of, for you pretty yeah, quickly. Yeah, what, uh, what Booney calls graphite rash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is kind of funny because I joke that I honestly, of course, before coming to Tennis Warehouse, we're not as geeked out, but I didn't realize how much, and I've spoken about this before, but how much just um, scraping up the graphite on the head of your racket can really ding down the swing weight. So if you guys are playing with old rackets that have severe graphite, I don't, a graphite rash, I guess is a good way to call it. um, There's a good chance that your racket's swinging a lot faster than it was when you bought it. So a lot of times people ask, when do I need to buy a new racket? Well, if you've got some severe graphite showing, that's a good, good sign. Um, One thing that people forget too, or maybe don't realize is you can use a thinner gauge string um, and you can also use a lighter weight type of string. So if you're playing with a thick, heavy poly, you throw a, you know, 17 gauge um, sin gut in there, you're going to drop some swing weight and a whole lot of durability. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. True. yeah but the string yeah definitely chris the string weight has a big difference i know like say like your 16 gauge looks on 4g is like one of the heaviest strings if you were to go to like an 18 gauge like multi-filament like nxt or something you'd probably drop the swing weight by like 10 points but like chris said you're gonna have a huge difference in performance too <laughs> a lot of power uh totally different feel another thing that's very minute but um 
if you use a dampener, especially those big, you know, thick rubber dampeners or the worm ones, <laughs> if you take, if you take that off, you know, you could drop maybe a point or two in swing weight, but yeah, those are the, those are really the only options there. I, I think you just stole Jay's answer right there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my bad, my bad. <laughs> I like, no one's got this one yet. Damn it. <laughs> Dang, these two are like two peas. <laughs> Jay, why don't you give us um, the essentials if you are, have never customized your racket and you're slightly intimidated, what are the essentials to get started? Um, yeah, just get yourself a packet of, of tungsten tape or, well, I, I would prefer tungsten tape. It's just a little bit easier to use um, over lead tape. So get yourself a pack of that. Um, maybe you can get a little tub of tungsten putty if that's something that you want to go for as well, if you want to tail weight your racket. Um, but I would recommend just maybe researching a little bit uh, before you start of what attributes that you want to go for before you start customising it. Um, so if you do want to make it just a little bit more ahead of light, then, then do go down that route of getting tungsten putty or a leather grip. Um, but if you do just want to make your racket a little bit more powerful, make it a little bit more stable, um, then, then pretty much, yeah, just get a, just get a packet of tungsten tape and, and a couple of YouTube videos later, you should um, be able to do a couple of differences. Speaking of YouTube videos, Troy has done a bunch of the differences of where you add weight and how to add weight. And I was on some of them because I needed him to explain it to me. Oh. <laughs> and I just have haphazard like, here, 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 here. What else do you guys think is important to know about customizing, especially if it's kind of, why, why should someone customize? Why should someone even consider customizing? Um, I think if you, you know, depending on what you want to do. <clears throat> so the biggest increase in swing weight and power you're going to get is by adding weight right to the tip of your racket. You can use weight tape with that. Um, you know, back in the day, people used to, you know, a lot of rackets didn't have bumper guards. And so they would add head tape to their rackets and, I remember seeing a racket um, in retail here at Tennis Warehouse and it actually belongs to a relative of mine and it had so much head tape over this beaten up bumper guard that it must have bumped the swing weight up about 20 points. But so that's going to impact the, the racket the most. Um, you're going to find a really big difference, just even adding a little bit of weight at the tip. Then you move out to 10 and 2, you're going to bump up the swing weight again substantially, but you're also going to increase a little bit of stability. Um, then you go three and nine. Now you're um, increasing stability the most because you're kind of putting it on the ears of the hoop and it's going to prevent that racket from twisting and talking in your hand the most. Um, and if you want to get the same sort of power from there, you're going to have to add a little bit more weight there because you're getting closer to the handle. And then, Troy, you want to talk about adding weight at the balance point and, um, and then in the handle. So I'm just not talking forever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, yeah, it's all good. Uh, yeah, weight in the, uh, like in the throat region, you know, that's basically uh, an easy way to increase the overall weight of the racket without really altering the balance that much. Um, there's other ways of doing it. You could do more of a polarized setup where you go, you know, ten or the tip of the racket and the handle to retain the balance, basically counterbalancing. Uh, but that's going to kick up your swing weight a lot because anytime you put, like Chris said, you put that weight at 12, you're kicking up your swing weight. If you put the weight in the throat or uh, actually another place that I never really knew about until kind of Chris showed me a while back, uh, is the throat or like right at the top of the grip, you can get like that quarter inch lead tape and just wrap it around there for days right at the top of the, where your, your grip stops. And you can really add a lot of weight there without, uh, throwing off the swing weight too much. So definitely a good way to increase static weight without throwing off the original balance point and that type of thing. So that's kind of the mid throat region. Um, and then if you want to increase the, the, uh, make the racket more headlight, uh, more maneuverable feeling. So say if you've got a racket that just, you know, lower static weight, it's got kind of a higher swing weight and you want to make it feel more maneuverable in your hand, even though you're technically not reducing the swing weight, um, is to throw it at the very bottom of the handle, that, that tail weighting inside the handle or underneath your grip. The, the more you go towards the very bottom where the butt cap's at, the more it's going to get, uh, it, the more easily you're going to make it head light. So you can throw a little bit of weight there, a lot of weight there, and you're definitely going to change the balance, making it uh, just feel like the racket kind of maneuvers easier because you have more of that that weight right in the palm of your hand, so to speak. And do you guys think it would be important for someone that is interested in starting to customize to get their rackets specced out so they know what they like and what they don't like? Or do you think someone could just do this by feel and kind of play around with it and figure it out on their own? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I would start off um, just seeing how your racket plays 
just in stock form, like straight off the shelf, see how it feels. Um, and then from there, try to notice what you need on court when you're playing, not while you're sitting at home. Um, just as you're actually hitting, just like try to also play against different people. Um, be like, yeah, okay, harder hitters. Yeah, I am I am struggling with stability or you know, these short balls, I need to be able to put them away a bit more. Let's add some more, more power to it. So um, then from there, yeah, like it, most most people can do it at home. You don't need anyone specifically to be able to do it for you. Um, um, and yeah, just just take a take a packet, um, snip some bit off, put a little bit on, and take it out on the court and see how it goes. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say we've t- maybe we talk about our matching service in another podcast, but I personally actually p- enjoy having brackets that have a couple different swing weight points. And especially if I'm in a pressure, I know I did this in the last tournament I played, which now has been a year, but um, in a pressure situation, I prefer a racket with a heftier swing weight. So I can literally like swing myself out of being nervous and I get kind of a little stuck and I want to hit out. So knowing that I have a racket that's heftier that I can lean on when I'm super tight and can't even like, you know, do anything with the ball is has been really cool, you know, an experience for me. So like, I know if I'm tight, I'm going to go with that heavier, hefty racket that I can swing out and the ball hopefully will still land in. Whereas once I'm dialed in and and kind of feeling my game, I can drop down to something that might be a little bit more maneuverable. So I think definitely something that you just feel, you don't need to see the number to know that one racket might swing a little heftier than the other one, but you'll, you'll definitely start feeling it. I'm the opposite, man. I want something that's <laughs> exactly the same in the bag. So for really? me, yeah, for me, I want my, especially my swing weights all to be, if I can get them within a point of each other, fantastic. You know, so when I'm super dialed in and that way, if, you know, a string breaks or anything like that, I know the next rank that comes out of the bag is going to come around my body feeling exactly the same as the one I just put away. So yeah, for me, I don't want any changes. <laughs> so I mean, this is the cool thing. I mean, it's, you know, different uh everyone's different and uh, you can really have fun with this and 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 you know make it really suit what you like and and what kind of turns you on as a player yeah basically michelle chris just said he's a stone cold killer and he don't get those nerves on court so (laughs) (laughs) shoot okay (laughs) you've got that stone cold roger federer look you know when you go up i know and i got the like oh shoot wait you better make this return (laughs) Yikes. <laughs> Anything else to add bef- uh, before we wrap this one up? Quick and easy little customization episode. Again, we would love to hear anyone that has further questions. We'd love to do further deep dives into this. And like I mentioned, definitely trying to get Crawford in to talk about um, some more of that customization, the tool that he's built. But what else? Anything else to add, you guys? Uh, one thing we didn't touch on was comfort, you know, and you, yeah. can, you can definitely make a racket more comfortable by customizing it and you can also make it <laughs> less comfortable by if you customize it the wrong way. Um, I've uh, overweighted a racket before and then I started getting wrist pain. Just was just too much for me to get around. And so I started wrist, you know, using too much wrist on my shots and mm-hmm. then it gave you know, I started having issues with my wrist. So if you do bump up too high, I think it can be detrimental. But on the flip side of that, you know, a little bit of weight that's within your comfort zone is good because that's going to absorb some of the shock. Uh, mass absorb shock really well and so it will um, definitely uh, you know take some of the sting out of the that contact which is great but again just don't go like Troy did when he started don't go too crazy with it Um, don't use the whole reel of of, uh, weight tape and uh, and you should be right Literally, like, don't be afraid to walk on the court with a bunch of lead and slowly strip it off. Because if you go down to the teat of tennis court, there's lead tape everywhere. <laughs> there's always stuff on the side of that court. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was going to say something on comfort. Um, like replacement grips, different replacement grips and different over grips can heavily change for me um, comfort as well. Um, like a leather grip is 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 great for for adding weight, but it. For some people, it can be a little bit, a little bit harsh on their hands. You know, like you do feel the bevels a lot more um, than you would, I guess, a, a standard cushioned um, replacement grip. Um, but yeah, and, and the same with over grips as well. You know, like more some pro over grip, super soft, super tacky, and um, that will heavily yeah, impact um, how it feels in your hands. So definitely, definitely change, change grips, and, and see um, what happens with comfort too. I reckon. Good call. 
Troy, any last tips or tricks? For me, a lot of times when I'm customizing my racket, uh, especially like if it's a player frame, kind of traditional thin beam, I always kind of go back to um, somewhat of the original uh, racket that I first started learning tennis with. And I just wanted to bring that up because I know for you, Michelle, you didn't even know what you were using way back when, but it totally makes sense why you use RF 97 spec or you like extended rackets with a, with a high swing weight because of the old Prince per, precision equip. Yep. And for me, uh, <laughs> for me, it was the Dunlop infield 200. And ever since then, my spec has kind of been right around there, you know, a little over 12 ounces, that kind of 330 ish swing weight. I know for you, uh, pretty hefty high swing weight if it's extended you know kind of you, you definitely like that so um yeah i just for a lot of rackets i've always kind of reverted back to that and when i started playing tennis i probably shouldn't have been using a racket that heavy but because i learned the game with that type of racket it almost you know that kind of became the extension of my arm so that's something too to consider you know people mm -hmm. that are moving on with rackets and you're, you're constantly demoing and trying new rackets you know, you definitely can tinker around with the specs a little bit. And, you know, if you know which racket you started with, if you can find the specs either on one of our web archives or you still have a racket laying around, sometimes it's good to kind of try to figure out that spec and go back to your roots type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm the same with that. I, when I started playing tennis, I was like 15, so pretty late. Um, but my first, like, racket, my, my proper racket I got from my coach, and it was the um, Bad Light Pure Storm control like control extended length as well so it was, it was yeah. beefy with 340 350 grams which i mean a 14 year old probably shouldn't really be playing with um yeah. and i played with that for like three years and then yeah so ever since that it's just like i i can't play with white rackets anymore it's just like i i customize everything to like that 340 gram <laughs> so yeah yeah everyone reverts back to that i think I was going to say, even hearing Chris talk about the head tape, I remember when I was little, they had like the bright pink and different <laughs> like checkered board. So like, I'm thinking, shoot, I probably had a lot of head tape on my racket back then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> have any of you guys yeah. ever played around with uh, power pads? And oh, maybe ex explain, I mean, I've used them back in the day. Troy, you ever use them and... I've tried, I've tried them on a couple rackets. I never like put them on my own racket, but I've tried like old rackets that we had laying around that had power pads. Yeah. Definitely changes the feel somewhat. Yeah. It, it, um, it's like the original, um, dampener almost, you know, for the, for the string, bed. it's not as much as putting a dampener in the string bed, but what power pads are, are the, um, they're the little bumps you'll see, um, down by the throat of a racket. And it's usually when a player is using natural gut, and the advantage of them is it takes the um, angle of the bend of the gut out as it makes its path back into the racket hoop. Um, and so it, it can help uh, make the gut last longer. The gut is so good quality these days that, you, you know, you don't need it as much, but it does alter the feel a little bit. And, uh, and so that's what they are. And they usually, you can use an old leather grip. Cool Troy, he's got a bunch kicking around probably that he's taken <laughs> off of rackets. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and you just cut it into little squares and you can build up some power pads there. But that's... Um, something that came up in the uh, the Federer interview that you did, Michelle. And so I just thought I'd bring that up. Yeah, it was cool because he even alluded to the fact that it was more of a nostalgic thing for him too. So it fits right into our nostalgia. Yeah, for sure. Well, I think that one, that wraps this episode up. We would love to hear any questions that you listeners have for us. We would be more than happy to answer if you have any concerns or fears about customizing. I hope this episode helped you realize that it's actually really easy and fun and it's a good way to change up what your racket does for you. And we have tons of tutorials on our YouTube channel, on our website. Um, Tennis Warehouse University is also a wealth of information and feel free to email us at podcast at tennis-warehouse.com. If you have any specific questions for these guys, I will be sure to pass it on. Thank you guys so much much for joining me and happy heading. Thank you.